All right, here we go. Another edition of Red versus Blue. My name is Mike Stark. And I'm Keith Curry. Today, my friend Keith Curry is going to tell us about the three stories this week that really weren't stories. Go, Keith. Well, you know, if you watch both Fox News and CNN and MSNBC, there was a degree of breathlessness (laughs) seldom seen in political reporting regarding three stories. The first story, which Fox News picked up, was the claim that, which was actually echoed by Donald Trump, that when Mar-a-Lago was searched for documents, that the FBI had uh, orders to uh, engage in lethal force and that it really was an assassination attempt and uh, Mm. that the FBI was there to uh, track him down and uh, murder him in his gold bathtub. And that's what it was all about. And that was picked up by what would otherwise call themselves serious people on Fox News. They're really probably not, who echoed all of that with great conspiratorial tones to try and convince people that it really was a plot to kill Donald Trump during the Mar-a-Lago document search. Now, what was probably left out of that is that FBI agents are always armed when they conduct a search that they are always authorized by law to use lethal force where it is appropriate, that there is always a triage plan when FBI agents are going en masse to a place where they don't know exactly what to expect. That has always been the case forever. Furthermore, Mike, when you stop and think about it, if you roll through a stop sign and a motorcycle officer pulls you over, That's an armed motorcycle officer who was authorized to use lethal force if something (laughs) in that traffic stop doesn't go right. The other thing is, is that the FBI, who, of course, coordinates with the Secret Service before they do any of that, apparently forgot the fact that Trump was a thousand miles away when the Mar-a-Lago search was happening. Hmm. So any such assassination attempt would likely not be successful. But that was nonetheless reported with remarkable breathlessness on Fox News and some other media sources. Well, you know, the first thing I thought of is that Joe Biden was going to take advantage of that immunity thing that uh, Trump is touting. His lawyers certainly laid out the argument for him. In fact, they were probably like fishing for another client. So I think that, you know, it could have been on the table. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Story number two that wasn't meant to be. Well, story number two has to do with the flags at Samuel Alito's house. Now, his wife and he, you know, perhaps got into a tete-a-tete with the neighbors. That's probably not toward what a Supreme Court justice should do. And they flew the American flag upside down, a universal symbol for distress. But with the same kind of breathless enthusiasm, CNN declared that that is a symbol of the January 6th insurrection because it's upside down. And therefore, that's how they're trying to telegraph their uh, support for the insurrectionist. And then he flew uh, at his beach house in New Jersey or wherever it is, the appeal to heaven flag with the pine tree on it, which was a flag used and designed by George Washington. George Washington actually put the words appeal to heaven on the flag. And if you go to Maine, the Maine flag, although it's not the appeal to heaven flag, looks very similar. It's a green pine tree on a white flag. They sell t-shirts and it's a popular symbol of the state in Maine. But because Some knucklehead showed up at the January 6th riot holding one of these flags. Mm -hmm. It was deemed to be a symbol of Christian nationalism, of the January 6th mob, and some other nonsensical conspiracy theories. Now, I took a look at some of the footage of January 6th. There were many people waving basic American flags. Uh, That did not have that symbol get appropriated to January 6th. There were people waving a Confederate flag. Now, I will tell you, Jeff Davis called. He wants his flag back. The the (laughs) Confederate flag is the symbol of the Southern Rebellion from 1861 to 1865. And the fact that some foolish idiot takes it into the Capitol now does not change that, nor does it change the fact that the Appeal to Heaven flag was a revolutionary war flag that is commonly displayed and celebrated and has been for 300 years as a symbol of the American Revolution. There was a Christian flag there. I've, you know, that's the same flag I've seen displayed in churches for 60 plus years. And all that means is that some guy stole it out of the church and took it with him to the riot. <laughs> uh, it doesn't change the meaning of the Christian flag. So very uh, true. Very people true. It's sort of back off of all of that. I mean, there's enough to be mad about in this world. That's not something. Well, as a liberal on this program, I don't get real excited about flags of any kind 
or any problems with flags on either side or from anybody. So that's my commentary on it. (laughs) That's a good position. Okay. The third story that wasn't meant to be. Well, it cut me quick to the heart. I was listening live uh, when Nikki Haley gave a tremendous speech outlining the issues and problems in the world today, many of them caused by Biden, some of them caused by Trump, which she freely acknowledged, which was her premier presentation for her new role at the Hudson Institute, which was followed by a question and answer where some guy sort of pointed out who is worse for America. Now, having just given a speech pretty much excoriating Joe Biden. It it was clearly not possible for her to say something positive about him. And she acknowledged that she is going to vote for Donald Trump. Now, when you think about it, she was a Republican. She is a conservative Republican. A lot of Republicans are going to vote for Donald Trump. A lot of them are going to hold their nose when they do it. I won't be one of them, but hundreds, thousands, millions will. And it really, if she's going to be a candidate down the line, had no practical political alternative, which is what people have come to sort of acknowledge and understand. She did not use the word endorse. She did not appear at a press conference to supplicate and follow him around and kiss the ring. She was critical of him, even as she said she was going to vote for him. But nonetheless, with the same breathless enthusiasm that they reported the flag story, CNN has been talking about it now for three days as if it was the most consequential political move of the season. Now, it's a challenge to the Biden campaign and the Democrats who are ostensibly trying to appeal to her voters that she is going to vote for Trump. They didn't uh, really reach out to her. Trump hasn't reached out to her, frankly. They've never spoken since March when she pulled out of the race and really before that. It is what it is. For those of us who are Haley supporters, it was disappointing, but it's understandable and life will go on. When I heard the news, the only person I thought of in this whole scenario was my pal Keith Curry who had been touting this young woman. I felt like my friend had had a jilted love. Just turn on him. Well, I don't know that it's quite that bad, but uh, (laughs) she she will live to fight another day and and we will regroup. Hopefully the country will get through this. Those were good stories that mean nothing, right? (laughs) They mean nothing. I mean, there was no assassination attempt by the FBI at Mar-a-Lago. The flags are a a tempest in a teapot. And the Haley endorsement of Trump, while I suppose it's newsworthy, is not going to move a lot of needles. Now we're going to talk about some actual things. (laughs) The election results. There's been some more primaries, right? Well, there were some interesting primaries. Let's talk Kentucky. We know we talked last time about the Maryland primary where a 20 percent of the the Republican vote voted for Nikki Haley, even though she's been out of the race for two months. And where we talked about the significant fall off, uh, nearly 400, 300,000 votes in the Republican primary participation in Maryland. Well, in Kentucky, the mirror image of that happened for Joe Biden. 30 percent of the Democrats voted for somebody not named Biden. Uncommitted got 18 percent of the vote and Mm one delegates to go to the Democratic convention on behalf of Kentucky. And Democratic turnout, which was 573, uh, 537,000 in 2020 dropped to 184,000. Wow. So if you look at that in context with the Maryland votes, what that tells you is that red states are going to get red or blue states are going to get bluer. And there is a dogged enthusiasm gap in both parties. This brings us to where we stand with the election as we move towards a vacation for this show. Let's kind of sum up where we are so that when we get back, we can pick up from there. Well, the answer is we are stuck in the trenches. A new round of polls came out today. Trump continues to have a narrow lead. He continues to lead in the battleground states. Robert Kennedy continues to be a factor. Robert Kennedy and Donald Trump are both going to speak at the Libertarian Convention. Robert Kennedy will speak today. Trump will speak tomorrow. The Libertarians, unlike some recent elections, uh, do not have a national candidate. They acknowledge that Robert F. Kennedy is going to take a fair amount of Libertarian votes There is some uh, libertarians who uh, will support Trump, even though Trump is the antithesis of what a libertarian stands for, given his authoritarian uh, positions. But nonetheless, uh, that's bad news for Trump, because if the libertarians are not a viable political force on the ballot, that is sort of the conservative alternative or the Republican alternative amongst the three party candidates. I voted for Gary Johnson, the governor of New Mexico, 
who was libertarian candidate in 2016. I knew Gary. He'd been a good governor. He'd been a Republican governor and ran as the libertarian candidate against Trump. And that's who I voted for. So without that kind of an option, uh, Republicans will have no good place to go. There was a new plethora of stories by Democratic political operatives and others say of, you know, hair on fire trying to get Joe Biden out of the race before the election, hoping that, you know, maybe he'll blow himself up in the debates and then they can substitute. But the panic is becoming palpable amongst uh, the Democrats, whereas the Republicans do appear to be coalescing. Now, we'll see if that holds, you know, if there is a conviction in the trial, then we'll talk about that in a bit. Biden gave a speech at Morehouse College where he says democracy doesn't work for you. And so he's sort of doubling down on the race card to try and appeal to black voters where he has been remarkably unsuccessful for a Democratic candidate. Trump was in the Bronx. He sees an opportunity there with a slice of minority voters. And you only have to take a slice to be a successful politician in this election. Trump had a uh, staffer. They call her the printer. She follows him around with a printer because he prefers to print out his, as you see him in court, print right. out emails and read them on paper, then read them on the phone. And, and that's her job. She apparently was the same person responsible for the uh, God made Trump uh, ad with the Paul Harvey voice that appeared a few months ago. Mm -hmm. But she did the unified Reich ad, where once again, somebody in the Trump universe decides, well, let's, let's appropriate some Nazi symbols. That's really what we need <laughs> to get our campaign going. <laughs> and there they go. So you ask, Mike, where is the campaign? The campaign is in the trenches. The needles are not moving much. The next shakeup won't be until either there is a uh, ground moving court decision on, on Trump or there is uh, you know activity in the debate that causes the electorate to move. But right now, it's, it's almost fossilized. We will be returning the day after the debate. So we'll catch up from whatever else we missed during this period of time. Before we leave, very quickly, the Trump trial, what do you see happening there? Monday, the Trump trial will have closing arguments. There will be motions to dismiss. I don't believe they will be successful. People basically say that the Trump defense did a good job of beating up Michael Cohen, but the Trump's own witness was a disaster. So now I think most of the morning line betting is, is on a conviction, at least on some of the counts in that trial. And so that's going to put Trump in a situation where if he is convicted, he's likely going to be awaiting sentencing and awaiting his probation report during his debate performance on the 27th of June with mm. Biden. But then the court action is going to move to the other side. Hunter Biden is going to stand trial in June on uh, his gun case and then a tax case in September. So Hunter Biden will be in the defendant's chair. Republicans will try and link him to Joe Biden. Uh, it just won't be a good look for the president during his campaign to have that happen. And in financial news, Mike, because we like to keep our investing uh, listeners uh, up to date, we had the financial reports by Trump Social. They lost $320 million. They had revenues of $770,000. Mr. Billionaire Trump is a little bit less of a billionaire than he was, as he is just about every day that stock trades. Wow. Well, I guess you or I won't be picking up any of that stock, right? Not unless it sticks to the bottom of your shoes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think on that note, we will bid you all adieu. We're going to take a month off. Heath's going to travel the world, and I'm going to travel the uh, county. And uh, we're going to uh, come back the day after the debate. So we will be able to watch the debate and give our opinions of what went on that day day, and then everything else that happens between now and the debate. So it'll be a big show when we come back. We want to thank you for sticking with us. Subscribe on any of the platforms that we uh, appear, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon Music. We're in a lot of different places and popping up in additional platforms. And we're getting some good uh, reviews and some good uh, feedback. So we appreciate that. Like our Facebook page. I think I covered everything. Keith. I think you did. Have a great vacation. And we will be back again at the end of June with another edition of Red versus Blue. Thanks, everybody. Take care.